The branch stacking crisis now enveloping the Labor Party deepened today with the resignation of a third minister in Victoria. The Assistant Treasurer, Robin Scott, well, he went last night during this show. And mid-morning, another minister, Marlene Carews, went as well. Both followed the exit of disgraced power broker Adam Somirak on Monday, whose foul-mouthed rants featured on Sunday night's TV expose. But even with these resignations, the basic problem remains. It's still a Labor Party, where controlling the numbers is more important than winning the battle of ideas, and it's a political culture that's now full of career activists who are better at playing political games than they are at actually running the state or the country. Make no mistake, this all stinks to high heaven. Premier Daniel Andrews was full of sanctimony yesterday, but never forget it was Daniel Andrews who made Somurek, first by putting the MP who'd a year earlier copped a suspended jail sentence onto the front bench, and then bringing him back again after he'd been later sacked for bullying a female staffer. And no one familiar with how politics works watching Sunday night spy footage would think this is anything other than a factional hit. This is the Labor left and parts of the Labor right running payback on someone who even by Labor's low standards wasn't up to behaviour that they could even stomach. Believe me, no faction and no party has a monopoly on sexist, homophobic, potty-mouthed ranters. These days, no epitaph is too rancid for your political opponents, particularly those on the inside. But where the Labor Party does seem to be in a league of its own, though, is the use of ethnic branch stackers to grab control of a seat or a state conference for one faction or another. If you control the numbers in a Labor-held seat, you can pick or unpick the local member. And if you control the numbers in the caucus, you can make and unmake party leaders and determine the makeup of the front bench too. That's because while the Liberal leader gets to pick their team, in Labor it's the factions who have the real power. If you're a factional warlord, the less your stacks, the less your numbers actually know and understand, the better, because robots are completely dependent on the person who programs them. Forget Labor's pretense of being the party that champions the newly arrived migrant. It's not about wanting a cohesive Australia. The reality is that as a political tool, recently arrived migrants make terrific stacks. And to the ethnic organisation that helps supply these stacks, taxpayer grant here and a taxpayer grant there, well, it's all part of Labor's transaction. Now, I'd like to say that there were no comparable shenanigans in the Liberal Party, but backroom bother boys employed by Clive Palmer tried over the weekend to roll Queensland opposition leader Deb Frecklington because Palmer wants a patsy as Premier after the next state election should Frecklington win and she is not Palmer's patsy. And, of course, who can forget Malcolm Turnbull? He notoriously flooded the Wentworth conference with new numbers back in 2004 when he successfully stacked out the then member, Peter King. I'll go even further here and say that the Turnbull coup against Tony Abbott was in part a response to Abbott's decision to ban lobbyists from the federal party executive. Now, by no means is there a moral equivalence here with what's happening in the Labor Party in Victoria. Come on, Liberals, this is not a good look either. So, as voters, what does all this insider hate and bile mean for you? Well, first of all, it means that too many people in our parliaments are more beholden to the factional vested interests that control their party pre-selections than they are to you, the voter, who might elect them. It's one of the reasons why so many politicians seem so out of touch with you, because often they're not the best candidate for the seat, but the most amenable option for the factional warlords the man or woman most likely to give them what they want rather than stand up for you. The answer for voters, though, is not to give up on our political parties and vote for independence because independents are often no less reliant on hidden vested interests.
think here about the renewable energy rent seekers that lined up behind Zali Stegel in Warringah. The answer here isn't to walk away from the fight, but to take it on. For the more real people like you that join political parties of your choice, don't care whether it's left or right, you'll end up making then political parties reflect your values rather than the values of these party insiders. Because democracy, I tell you, it's a fragile beast. If all of us give up on the system, then the system will give up on us. And to paraphrase Churchill here, it might be perfect. Indeed, it is said it's the worst form of government, except for all those other forms that have been tried from time to time.